Donald Trump does not care about border security. He only cares about himself. And when I am president, I will work to actually solve the problem. A new report finds the Biden-Harris administration has supercharged migration from Latin American countries with a program that has granted refugee status to more than 20,000 people from seven different Latin American countries in just one year. The Center for Immigration Studies says many of these people coming to the United States would normally be classified as economic migrants and not refugees who are fleeing potential persecution. Joining me now is Tennessee Congressman Andy Ogles. He has introduced an impeachment article against Harris over her role as border czar. Congressman, good to see you. This morning. Thank you so much for being here. Tell us about uh, this impeachment article. Well, it's important that we uh, lay out the facts when it comes to immigration and the, the Harris-Biden uh, lawless border. They've allowed millions of people to come into this country. They've allowed crime uh, to sweep the nation, fentanyl to sweep the nation. You have 12, 13, 14-year-old girls that are targets of sexual predators from Central and South America. Uh, it is unconscionable for her to talk about the idea or float the idea that she's serious about border security when, as borders are, she's allowed her nation to be invaded. Well, I mean, former President Trump has talked so much about this, and yet Kamala Harris comes out in that rally and, and, and you know, talks to people and says Trump doesn't care about immigration or the border. Do you think this is resonating, given the fact that this has been Trump's pretty much priority since he came down that elevator in 2015? Escalator, rather? Well, this is the this is her biggest liability. Every small town in America is a border town. Every small town in America is experiencing fentanyl crisis, uh, increased crime. And so when you have mayors of Dallas, blue mayors, Democrat mayors of Dallas and Chicago and New York crying for help, please, please secure the border. And then yet the Harris Biden administration is doing nothing about it. We should hold her accountable. And what you also have to note and what you're seeing right before our eyes is this corporate woke media is reinventing Kamala Harris. The rewriting history talking about how she wasn't the border czar so somehow she's tough on the border or tough on crime and yet when she was a u.s senator she was horrible for the middle class she was horrible for crime uh, she did, is not deserving of being president of the united states i believe we should impeach her i believe we should lay out the facts before the american people before the woke media uh, again reinvents her right before our eyes jonathan jump in here you were at ice is this resonating in, in terms of you know rewriting history on kamala harris that she wasn't the border czar. She wasn't banning fracking. She, she, wa she wanted to do a buyback of guns. It's all, she's changing everything in the last seven days. Yeah, it's truly breathtaking. And if they're able to pull it off, it just shows how bad our corporate media is because most people don't trust the media by and large, but the media is still quite influential. And when you're talking about people in the middle, the voters in the middle, they they may not know this stuff very well. So she can get up there and say, say you know, she's been tough on the border or will be tough on the border. But earlier this week, uh, Elizabeth Warren kind of gave up the game. I know we all know this, but she talked about the pathway to citizenship, which is that's always the goal is to bring in as many people as possible and then give them citizenship so they will be Democratic voters, at least two thirds of them will. But Congressman, are you getting this message across? Is this the best way through impeachment or are there other ways to get it across? And the other thing that I think doesn't get enough attention is the cost of illegal immigration in terms of health care, schools, and all these other costs to the American people that are not just short-term border costs with people crossing, but long-term communities are going to be paying for this for 10, 20, 30 years, even more. We are absolutely. We have to force this conversation. I think there's some within the Republican Party that are kind of timid, afraid to have this tough conversation. But we have to lay out the facts before the American people. The media is not going to do it for us. And when you talk about the relative cost, you look at the state of Tennessee. It costs uh, Tennesseans almost a billion dollars a year, the cost of illegal immigration. When you look at the, you know, whether it's food stamps, health care, education, et cetera, that's monies that should be going to the, our children, citizens of this country, our veterans, uh, the benefits that they deserve and were promised. And so there's a real cost uh, to illegal immigration. And again, a state like Tennessee is paying almost a billion dollars, B is in Bravo, uh, in real money going to those folks who have come here willfully in violation of our laws and quite frankly should be sent back. That's why I have the Send Them Back Act, which would trigger the largest deportation in American history. Uh, former President Trump holding a rally in Harrisburg, 
Pennsylvania last night. This was the first time back in the state of Pennsylvania since surviving last month's assassination attempt. I want to get your reaction. Watch this. This is my first return to Pennsylvania since our rally in Butler. We're going back to Butler, too, by the way. People said to me, are you serious? I, I said, I'm serious. 18 days ago, where we had a very terrible day, we had a rough day, I will tell you, by all accounts, I should not be with you today. And I want to thank all of the people of Pennsylvania for their extraordinary love and support. So, Congressman, Fox News Digital obtained new video from James Copenhaver. He was critically wounded after being shot at the Butler rally. It shows what appears to be the gunman moving around on the roof. Oh, uh, minutes before opening fire. No one watches this guy. Look at this. We, we see it so clearly. He's walking back and forth on the roof. Kansas Senator Roger Marshall is now investigating Google, asking why its autocomplete search tool was not showing results for the Trump assassination attempt. Marshall calling on Google CEO Sundar Pichai to testify now before Congress. Uh, former President Trump is set to sit down with the FBI today for an interview about the shooting. Congressman, what are your thoughts about all of this? It seems like you're up against uh, really an uphill battle. You've got the media, uh, social media, trying to hide the facts of, of what took place here. And, of course, uh, the, uh, the FBI wanting to interview Trump, he's going to do it today. Well, you know, I, for one, don't trust the FBI. I don't trust the Secret Service to do an investigation. Uh, they're in CYA mode at, at the moment. That's why we have to have this House task force to get to the bottom of, uh, bottom of this uh, situation. And, and look, I was with the general on Sunday, and we were talking about, you know, uh, from his perspective, he was there in the first Gulf War, that if you have gaps in your layers of security and your layers of perimeters, uh, that the enemy will uh, ultimately find those gaps and exploit those gaps. And so mm -hmm. what you saw, was a gross breakdown of the Secret Service, and someone, quite frankly, without much skill or training, was able to exploit those gaps. This is this makes Kamala Harris, this makes Joe Biden, it makes anyone who has a Secret Service protection less safe. So they have to shore up uh, their protocols. They have to, quite frankly, reinvent themselves and do uh, become the storied agency that we all assume that they are or should be, uh, because their protection of the president is unconscionable. Now, what I will say is uh, the president was in Nashville this weekend. Uh, there was a suspicious person, so they, they shut down the bubble. I actually got trapped in a room with the president for about 45 minutes. And what I can tell you is he's in good spirits. Uh, he wasn't uh, shaken by the fact that there was uh, yeah. an individual that, that they were worried about. And he was ready to go out there and was, quite frankly, anxious to get out to the audience. He was worried about the audience and the delay. And so yeah. he's ready to fight. He's ready to debate. And we're going to win this thing. Well, your home state of Tennessee holding Republican primaries today. You're facing off against Against Nashville Metro Council member Courtney Johnston. Uh, tell us about the state of the race and what do you want to say about your opponent? Oh, well, you know, uh, we're, we're running uh, as if we're not winning, but we are. You know, you, you, my kids run cross country. We always tell them at the end of the race, uh, turn on your jets and run through the tape. But look, I'm tough on the border. I'm tough on crime. My uh, opponent is a woke rhino, and the, the, the voters know that, and we're going to bring home the victory. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. We'll be watching. Congressman Andy Ogles joining Thank us. Thank you, sir.